Hi there, welcome to Bitbee. My name is Tirupathero. I am the author of Bitbee. This is the fifth video for our machine learning course for beginners. If you are new to this channel or to this course, I would recommend you to go through the full roadmap of this course. You can find the link for the full roadmap in the info section. I also provided the GitHub link in the description. In my previous video that is 2.1, I have covered already about the Google collaboratory platform for the machine learning with Python. And this video is to cover the unit 2 for the remaining chapters where we cover all the basic topics of the python that is from chapters 2.2 to 2.6. So coming to the topics, first we are going to explore about the variables in python. Basically variables were used to store the data. Then we'll see what are the different kind of data types that python supports like to store different kind of numbers like integer numbers, floating or decimal numbers and the complex numbers. So in your school mathematics, you might have heard about the complex numbers which will have both real part and the imaginary part. Python supports these numbers through complex data type which is a very important kind of data type to learn machine learning with Python. Here you can see 1 plus 2i or 3 plus 5j are the examples of complex numbers. To store the sequence of characters, Python has string data type. It also has boolean data type which can store true or false values. Then we'll explore about the special data types in python that is list, tuple, set and dictionary. These special data types are used to store the collection of values or data. So whenever we code in python for machine learning, usually we use these special data types very frequently. Hence these data types are important for ML. And then we'll explore about the different available operators in python such as arithmetic operators, logical operators, bitwise operators. These operators are very useful to perform the arithmetic operations and other conditional operations. Then we'll explore about the control flow statements such as if else statements for loops while loops. These statements are help us in to make decisions and also to perform the repetitive tasks. Then finally we will explore about the functions. Functions are reusable code blocks. That means we will write these code blocks or functions once and we can use any number of times in our program. So at this point you might think are these topics are more than enough to learn python for machine learning. I will not say yes or no but these are the very essential topics for python as well as machine learning. So once you are ok and clear with these topics try to code along with me so you automatically get stronger with python. So without making any further delay, let's dive into the coding of these topics on Google Colab. So yeah, as usual, just open Google search in your browser and search for Google Colab login. Open the first link from the search result. So as I already logged into my Google account on my browser, so it's automatically popping up the open notebook window. So once you log into your Google account, just click on the folder icon showing on the left side menu, then click on this Google Drive icon. So it will ask for a permission to access your Google Drive account. Then click on connect to Google Drive and then click on continue to allow the Google Drive. And then select the required permissions. Scroll down and click continue again. Now you can see Google Colab automatically mounting your drive to the Google Colab. The reason we are mounting the drive to our Google Colab account is whenever we create our Python notebooks and run the programs, these notebooks automatically save to our Google Drive so we will not lose them. So once mounting is success, when you click on this folder icon, you can see the drive that is your Google Drive folder and you can explore and browse all the files and folders there. Now go to the file menu visible at the top left corner and click on new notebook. Then it will create and open a new notebook with default title. Just go and rename that one as you wish. I am just typing it as ml underscore python dot ipvnb. So now let's go to settings and change the theme to dark from light. It will be better and it will look good when we code. So finally everything is ready to code. Let's start. And we'll start with a print statement. So our first program I'm just printing print hello world. Then click on alt enter or click on this play button to run that. So then it will give the output hello world or it prints the hello world. 
So here if we observe the statement print is a function that is python inbuilt function and hello world is a argument we are passing to that function. Similarly we can also define our own functions. I will show you in our last chapter how we can define those own or customized functions. So now let's dive into our very first topic that is data types in python. So as we discussed earlier, we have following data types that is integer, float, string, boolean and the complex number data types. So let's start with the integer. I am taking one variable called a and I am assigning a value 100 to it. Now using print function, we will see what is the type of variable a that is which data type. So inside print function, we are passing another function as an argument that is type. So it will print the type of variable a. So you can see in the output class in that means type of variable a is integer. And if you print the variable a, the value will be 100. Now let's create some decimal numbers and we'll check the data type of it. So I'm just assigning a value 99.999. Then again just print the type of variable B. Now the output is class float which means data type of decimal number is float. Now let's check for the complex numbers. Creating a variable c and assigning a number 3 plus 5j. Printing c and then printing type of c. Control or shift enter. Now you can see the output of it. And you can see the output is class complex. So these are the basic numerical data type that is integer, float and complex. Now let's see how we can cast one data type to other data type. That is we will convert from float to int and integer to float. So I have inside variable a with 1000 which is an integer number. So I have taken another variable b. To convert I am using function float and passing the variable a as parameter. Since my variable b is already float I am taking a new variable i. Then let's print i. Then control or shift enter. Now you can see the output. Then we printed i which is a conversion of a that is float of a and it's printed as thousand decimal zero. That means it's changed to floating data type. We can also convert back from floating data type to integer data type. Now I assign variable b with random floating value that is one two three dot triple three double three. Now I will take another variable j and I will assign it with int of b. So it should be converted to integer that means the decimal should go away. So I am printing b. Then I will print j. Let's see the output. There you can see it's first printed the decimal number having decimals then it's printed the converted integer that is 1 2 3 only. I have printed one more statement with print b and it still holds the decimal value. So originally b will change to integer if we assign it to the same that is like b equal to integer of b. And then let's print it now. There you can see the output is 1, 2, 3 now that is integer. And now let's print all the variables we have created and assigned. That is data types of a, b, i and j. You can see except i which we have not converted to float all others are converted to integer. So that is all about the number data type conversions. So now let's jump into the next kind of data types that is boolean data types. Boolean type variables can hold only two kind of values that is true or false. The boolean values true and false are very important in any programming language because these values help in to make decisions or to check the conditionals wherever required. So let's check and to variable a we will assign a boolean value that is true.
and if we print a and type of variable a then it will give the output true and type of a is boolean there you go value is true and the class is boolean similarly if you take a value b equal to false then print b there you see value is printing as false now let's print the type of variable b so it's printed as class boolean so usually in our real time scenarios actually we will validate the statements and we will assign that to the variable that means the booleans extracted from the statements so if you see here we are assigning a statement value to a that is 1000 is greater than 1000 dot something so definitely it should give false we will check the value in a so let's print it that is print of a there is the output as false don't just confuse that is four digit value should greater than three digit value even it has more number of decimals right so i am taking one more variable here b and i am assigning a one more boolean statement that is 9999 should greater than 999 even it is having more number of decimals right there you can see the output as true now if you try to print the type of a and type of b still they are booleans So just run the code there you can see both are still booleans now let's dive into the next kind of data types that is sequence of characters or string literals these strings we can either uh, encoded with a single quotes or double quotes i have already written some statements in the first statement i have assigned a string called machine learning with bit b to variable a and i'm printing it here Also, I am printing two more string literals with double quotes one that is hello bees and another is with single quotes hello bit bees. If I run it, you can see the output both were printed. And coming to the final code block, I am just assigning string 1 to variable b, string 2 to variable c and I am trying to print them and type of them as well. So they should print string as data type, right? let's execute it there you go now you can see each one of the data type is str right there we can also apply simple tricks on printing strings suppose if you want to print this 100 five times you can see i have added 100 into 5 in the print statement so it's printed five times So if I want to print uh, only some characters of a string that is some substring we can perform an operation called slicing of string let us see how we can do that suppose I am taking variable a with hello world So if you want to slice it, so total hello world has 10 characters, right? Hello world without spaces. And if I want to print from first index to fifth index, right? It will start from zero index, but I want to print from first. So I can print it as print in a bracket that is square brackets one colon six so it will start from one and ends at five so this should print from letter e and it should end at letter w right e l l o w here you go it's printed e l l o w so this is how we can extract substrings using slicing method from 
strings. We can also extract the alternative letters that is odd or even indexed letters. So how we can do that? Let's see. Let's say if we want to extract all the odd indexed letters starting from 0 to end that is 10. Then we need to pass the arguments 0 to 10 then that th one more argument with colon 2. Here 2 represents the third index right 0 1 2. Hit Alt Enter. Now you can see the output H L O O L, which means it started from zeroth index and printed at second, fourth, sixth, and eighth index letters. Right? That is all about the string slicing process. This might be handy for interview questions also. Coming to the next topic with strings, uh, we can also perform concatenation operations, which we frequently do in our programming. Let's try to concat two string variables. I'm taking a is equal to machine learning and then b is equal to with bit b. If we concat them inside a print statement, we can do print a plus b. Yes, we can use plus operator for string concatenation. Now hit shift enter or control enter. You can see the output machine learning with bit b. That means both the strings got concatenated, right? We have already seen in numerical data types that is integer. Uh, when we add two numbers, we are using plus operator like in print statement print a plus b. It's giving us sum, right? Let's take two variables here a is equal to 10 and b equal to 20 and let's print them print 10 plus 20 sorry print a plus b of course it will give us the addition 30 right it is as expected similarly what will happen if we give a equal to 10 as a string literal and b equal to 20 again as a string literal so if we try print a plus b let's see what will be the output interesting print a plus b alt enter boom surprisingly it is not making addition right it is 10 20 it is just concatenated as a string only so there is no auto conversion happening here so what will happen if we add one integer and one string right so i have changed b equal to 20 as an integer now let's try to do print a plus b hmm, one more interesting operation so alt enter Oh, it's throwing an error saying it can only concatenate str that means string not into string. So overall, if you pass two strings for concatenation operator, it, it's able to concatenate them, but not one string and one integer. If you are passing two integers, it's simply performing the addition operation on them, right? I hope you got uh, the manipulation of strings and integers now. So now if I change back the variable b to string, that is if I assign b equal to I am a number then if I print again a plus b of course it will print without any error that means it was able to concatenate so that is all about string data types uh, it's very important data type now let's dive into our next topic that is special data types you can pause the video and take a small break and come back then we can go through these special data types so I have written a notes here for special data types in machine learning starting from very small to complex programs everywhere we are going to use these special data types that is list, tuples, set and dictionary. So just keep your eyes on this topic and let's proceed. So all these data types were used to hold collection of values or records. These values can be individual values or it can be a key value pairs. Especially in dictionary we will use the key value pairs. So let's start with the list data type with following topics that is creating list, declaration and initialization, checking data types, accessing elements in a list, then modifying a given list and finally we'll try to merge or concatenate two different lists. Let's just create a empty list. I am creating a empty list named as list underscore one equal to empty square brackets. So it will create a list with empty values or no values. 
then let's just check the type of this list so print type of list underscore one then hit alt or control enter to execute there you go it is showing data type as list that is class list now let's initialize the list with uh, some values that is list underscore one equal to 10 20 30 40 i have given four values all are integer numbers then let's print the list that is print list underscore one so it should print all the values in the list there you go the output is 10 20 30 40 inside square brackets that is list right so if i want to access the elements inside this list i will use indexes again so here print list of one square brackets if i want to access the second element i have to give the index as one since index starts from zero then hit enter here you can see it's printing the second number 20 right so if we want to modify the list that is if we want to delete some values from the list we can use del so let's delete the third elements to del space list underscore one square brackets two so it will delete the third element so now hit alt or control enter and then print the list underscore one there you can see the output 10 20 and 40 only Till now we assigned only the integer numbers to the list. Let's check by assigning different values whether list will accept those or not. So here I am giving values to the list 1, 2 integers, bit b that is a string and then 3.5 which is a float then machine learning. So we have given integers, floats and strings. Let's see what will happen. Now let's print the list underscore 2. Then Alt Enter or Control Enter. There we go. It's accepting. So it's little strange with Python. I came from Java background. Usually in Java, lists will not allow hybrid data types. But here Python is allowing. That's how it works. now let's try to perform concatenation or merge operation on list so we are going to merge two lists list one and list two and we will assign that to list three so list underscore three is equal to list one plus list two we are using again the plus operator here let's print the type of list three that is print type of list underscore 3 and then let's print list 3 that is print list underscore 3 now hit alt or control enter there you go the type of list 3 is list then the two lists got merged into list 3 that is list 1 and list 2 you can see all the values in list 3 now that's how we can concat or merge the two list. Now let's try to modify the list 3 by appending some more values into it. So let's use append function to append a new value. So list 3.append inside I will write machine learning is a fun. Already we have machine learning. So just write is a fun. I am also deleting the value at index 5 that is bit b. So del space list underscore 3 with index 5. And now let's try to print the list 3. Now just run the code, there you can see the output, it's appended is a fun at the end, right? It also deleted the value at index 5 that is bit b. 
that is all about the list data type and different operations we can perform with it. Now let's dive into the next special data type that is tuples. Tuples also are used to store collection of data. Tuple is similar to list but it has special features. Let's see what are those features. You can see the different properties of tuples I have mentioned here. Tuples are immutable in nature. That is, once we create a tuple, we cannot modify it, which means we cannot insert or append or we cannot delete the elements from the tuple. And the next is tuple will also allow the duplicates like list. And the next is tuples are faster than the list due to immutable nature and since tuples are hashable, their content can be used as a dictionary keys. We will see it in a moment. Tuples can be used in sets but lists we cannot use in sets. As lists are mutable in nature, they violate the rules of immutability with sets. Likewise list, to declare a tuple, we will use open and closed parentheses and inside we will give the elements. So here I am giving 10, 20, 30 and some string and some floating number. Let's print the tuple and the type of the tuple. Now hit Alt Enter or Control Enter to execute. There you can see the output. The type of tuple is class tuple. Of course the values. Also we can observe that tuples allow multiple kind of data types. We can also find the size of the tuple using the length function. So print len of tuple 1. There it gives the size 5. Likewise, if we want to access the element in the middle, let's access the fourth element. So print tuple index 3, which will give the fourth element. There it is. It prints the hello, which is the fourth element and index is 3. Now let's test the immutability of the tuple. As per immutable property, once a tuple is created, it should not be modified. Let's try to append some element. So tuple underscore 1 append bit b. Control enter. There you go. It's throwing an error. And the error is tuple object has no attribute append. Means we cannot change the existing tuple. Now we'll quickly try delete operation also. So del space tuple underscore one some value three. Let's see. Yeah, it's also throwing an error. Tuple object doesn't support item deletion. Now let's work on the conversions that is list to tuple and tuple to list. We'll see how it will support. I'm making one list, list underscore four equal to some values in the list. Then I will convert it to tuple, tuple equal to tuple of list underscore 4 print tuple underscore 2 then print type of tuple underscore 2 now hit control or alt enter then you can see the output it was changed to tuple you can see the brackets and the type is class tuple so we can convert from list to tuple now let's try the reverse one. Uh, we will convert tuple to list now. Okay. So I am taking a tuple. The same tuple which we used. And I am putting into that list. So list of tuple underscore 2. And print that list. Type list underscore 5. Yeah, it's converting to list. So tuple to list conversion also allowed. So until now we have covered list and tuples under special data types. Let's start with the third one that is sets. So I have written a notes for sets here. So sets are mutable unlike uh, tuple. 
sets won't allow duplicates this is the very important feature of sets whereas we have seen lists and tuples allow duplicates right there is one more unlike feature for the sets they are not indexed i mean that means the elements in the set are not indexed so only way we can access the elements through the loop or function which will get and remove the element from the set those are all important features of the set now let's dive into the coding of set now let's create a set uh, set will start with curly braces and i am putting some elements in that and i'm knowingly putting duplicate for two times so we'll see how it will give the output now let's print the set that is print set one and also let's print the type of set type of set here we go yeah it's given the output we can see in the output that we have given six elements but it has printed only five elements and it's removed the duplicate for automatically and of course the type of set is class set so there can be an interview question around it if you want to remove a duplicate from list you just convert it to set it will automatically remove the duplicates so now let's check the next property that is mutability of sets we have seen that set can be mutable let's check with that set one dot add we are using here add function to add the new elements so set one dot add world let's print it print set one hit controller alt enter there we go the output is one two three four world and hello one important observation here if you see we have inserted one two three four hello then world but it's printed world first then hello that means set is not indexed and it will not preserve the insertion order So we know sets will not preserve the insertion order. Let's try one more thing that is concatenation operation on sets. We'll take two sets. Okay, we have already one set that is set one, right? Print the length of a set using length function, length set. So now I am taking set two. Okay, and I'm inserting values to set two, same values from set one. One, two, three, four, world and hello. And then let's print and concatenate set one and set two. Print set one plus set two. Then hit Alt Enter or Control Enter. There we go. It's throwing error. That is unsupported operand types for plus set and set, which means sets won't support plus operator. Now let's see how we can access the set elements as there are no indexes available for the set elements. So I'm just using a for loop here. Uh, of course, we will read in detail for loops later. So to access the elements, I'm using for loop for item in set two colon print item. So the loop will iterate through the set and it will print all the elements. Here you can see one, two, three, four, world, hello. This is how we can use a for loop and access the elements of a set. So here this can be a tricky interview question never fall into trap that we can use indexes on a set there were no indexes at all with the sets we have to use only for loop to access the elements. Then next we'll quickly convert a list to set to save your time I have already taken a list and converted to set using set method passing list as argument then I'm just printing the list and set and here is the output you can see both list and set which means list is converted to set and of course we also convert back from set to list uh, here i'm taking list 7 and i'm converting the set 3 to list and printing the list 7 there you can hit control enter or alt enter you can see the output there it's a list and it has all the values right so that is all about the set data type now let's move to that uh, final special data structure that is dictionaries. So dictionary is one of the fundamental data type in Python. Unlike other like list and sets, it will take key value pairs instead of single values. 
dictionaries also will not have indexes it have only the key value pairs and the elements can be accessed using keys so i'm just creating a dictionary here and initializing with some key values here the first key is role and role number is one as value then second key is name and value as some name ajay and the third value is sorry the third key is status like say subject status past value is past so this is how the dictionary will looks like and let's print the type of the dictionary type of dic and print the dictionary there we go you can see the type of dictionary is dict class and it has printed the key value pairs in curly braces now let's try to access the values or the elements using keys so write print and access the elements using bic dictionary name and the key role right and the second one is uh, name third one is status let's try to execute it oops seems i have made a typo for the key status let's change it to status execute it and now yeah here you go you can see output is one aj and past it printed all the values so this is how we can access the values in a dictionary using keys one more important feature of dictionary is it won't allow duplicates that is it won't allow the duplicate keys we can put any number of duplicate values but not the duplicate keys let's check it so i'm just taking the values from the above dictionary just copy pasted the same dictionary with the role number one name aj status past let's put again the same key values in the dictionary so i will just copy paste the same key values so every key and values will be duplicated twice right yeah so let's print dictionary and there you go it's not allowing duplicate keys duplicate keys were not allowed since the values are paired with these duplicate keys those also not getting inserted into the dictionary uh, don't just confuse here what i'm trying to say is suppose you take a value aj you can bind it with the roll number you can also bind it with the status it will be allowed you can repeat the values but you cannot repeat the keys so that is all about the special data types in python uh, here i have prepared a chart or summary table for you for these special data types you can go through it now you can take a break and come back so we will complete the remaining topics so welcome back now let's start our next topic that is operators in python so we have following different operators that is arithmetic comparison logical assignment membership identity and bitwise operators operator concept is a fundamental and easy one we will go through it very clearly don't worry these operators are very handy to perform arithmetic operations decision making or logical comparisons and many more we'll go through each and every operator in a while so i have written a small notes on operators which we have already discussed till now uh, now let's go with the coding on operators so let's start with the arithmetic operators first i am taking two numbers here num1 equal to 10 num2 equal to 30 let's perform addition using plus operator so sum equal to num1 plus num2 then we print sum sum equal to sum then subtraction using minus symbol or the dash right so difference is equal to num2 minus num1 print difference difference then multiplication so multiplication equal to num1 into num2 print multiplication of course similarly division and modulo operators here modulo operators give us the remainder whereas division gave us quotient okay and the last operator is exponential operator which is star star so exponential operation is nothing but we are doing x power y here x is num2 and y is num1 so on execution you can see the values here the operations performed sum is 30 difference is 20 multiplication equal to 300 quotient is 3.0 and the remainder is 0 
and the exponential result 30 power 10 is the large number you can just verify it value is 59049 then nine zeros now let's check the next set of operators that is comparison operators generally these operators were used between two operands to compare them and the resultant of these operators is a boolean value whether true or false so i have already written code snippets here uh, to test these operators i'm just testing each operator and assigning that boolean value to x and printing those let's execute and see the output here we go so the output is 5 equal to 3 is false 5 not equal to 3 is true 5 greater than 3 is true then 5 less than 3 is false then 5 greater than equal to 3 is true and 5 less than equal to 3 is false so operators were working as expected right now let's jump into the next set of operators that is logical operators so here i have written the code snippets to test the logical operators if you check these statements i have taken the previous uh, comparison operators and mixed them with these logical operators right so let's see what they are resulting with the output hit alt or control enter to execute there you go the output is true true and false 5 is greater than 3 and 5 is less than 10 that is true 5 is greater than 3 or 5 is greater than 10 that is also true right last one needs 5 greater than 3 and we are getting that true to false and it's printed false so that is also fine right this is how logical operators works and they are very handy when you want to combine the multiple decision making conditions now let's dive into the next set of operators that is assignment operators basically the assignment operator is equal to we can combine this operator with other arithmetic operators so along with assignment this can perform the respective arithmetic operations and it will assign the resultant values to the variables so here initially i have taken x equal to 5 that means i have assigned x with 5 then i made addition x plus equal to 3 now x is 8 then i made x minus equal to 3 that means 8 minus 3 equal to 5 and the next operation is star equal to that means multiplication 5 into 3 equal to 15 the next is divide operation 15 by 3 equal to 5.0 and the next is modulo operation now 5.0 divided by 3 equal to 2.0 then exponential and sn operator so now to the power 3 equal to 8 that is 8.0 and the final operation is flooring so now 8.0 divided with 3 so resultant will be 2.6 plus something when it's get flowed the value will be 2.0 so that is all about the assignment operators now let's dive into the next set of operators that is membership operators so the two membership operators are in and not in these operators were used to check a sequence if the specified value is present in it or not so here i have taken two examples in the first example i am checking the character a is present in the sequence banana or not similarly for the second example i am checking the character b not present in banana or not so of course from the first example it will print true and the second example will print false right as both characters were present in the sequence so for the second example if i change b to z z is not in banana it should give true execute yeah it is right it's giving true now similarly for the first example if i change from a to z it should give us false let's change to z uh, sorry there is a typo i have to give single quote yeah let's check it yeah it's giving false it's working as expected right so that is all about the membership operators they are very simple now let's go through the final operators that is identity operators identity operators were used to check whether two objects are same or not internally these operators compares the address of the variables instead of the content so if the two variables representing the same address those variables will be same and is operator will give true if not false so here in the first example i have created a variable and assigned a value 5 then one more variable i have created y and assigned a value 5 again and finally the variable z i have assigned it with x 
So in Python, in context of computer's memory, suppose we consider the address blocks from 100 to 1000 and if the first statement x equal to 5, if it is occupying the address 200 with value 5 and the movement after writing the statement y equal to 5, 5 is already available in the computer's memory. So y object will point to the same address memory. The same situation with the z variable also as we directly assigning the x to z. In summary, from the first example, all the print statements will give true since all the variables were pointing to the same address memory 200. This is how is operator works. Similarly, to check both the objects were not same, we will use the is not operator, which works in the similar fashion. I have given the example code snippet in the second example. You can just try it with is not operator. So the next set of operators, the final one is bitwise operators. I have given the code snippet here for the bitwise operators. I don't want to spend much time here for these operators. You might have applied these uh, bitwise operators in your school mathematics on binary numbers. This is the same case how these operators work here. Also I have prepared the summary table for the, all the operators we discussed till now. We can go through the table. You can have a final or one more break and come back we will discuss the final two topics that is conditional statements and loops. Welcome back. Now let's dive into our next topic conditional statements. So in Python for conditional checking we can use if, else if or else statements to control the flow of our program based on conditional expressions. Let's code and demo some examples so that you will understood this concept easily. Let's take variable a equal to 10. If a is greater than 0 then print a is greater than 0 else print a is less than equal to 0 right less than or equal to 0. So if we execute this, oops there is an error sorry. It's a syntax error. We have to give colon at the end of if condition and else. There it is. Since a equal to 10 is greater than 0, so it's printed the first statement. It was able to make the decision based on conditional result that is boolean. In the same way, if you want to check one more condition for uh, equality, you can use else if here, that is elif if a equal to 0, then print is equal to 0, else print a is less than 0, right? Now let's hit control enter, there it is printed a is equal to 0, right? Since I made a is 0. Suppose if I now change a equal to minus 90, then execute, yes, a is less than 0. Since both if and else if failed, so it went to the else condition. Now again I changed a equal to 90 then executed. Yes, it went to the first condition only. a is greater than 0. I hope now you get the basic idea how these if, else if and else works. Now let's dive one more step more by making them tricky using nested if else. So here I have taken three variables x equal to 10, y equal to minus 5 and z equal to 0. If x is greater than 0, I again put the else if conditions which are nested. If x is less than equal to 0, it will go to the else part and again there is a nested if else conditions. In first part, it will check for y and in the second part or outer else, it will check for the z value. If we execute it, x equal to 10 which is greater than 0. So it went into the if condition and printed x is positive then y is negative, right? Suppose if I change now x equal to some minus value, so x equal to minus 10 and y equal to 5 then execute, it went to the else condition x is non-positive and z is 0. This is how we can use if, else, if and else for complex decision making. That is all about the conditional statements. Now let's jump to our final topic loop statements. <music> so 
so falling are the loops in python that is for loops and while loops usually loops were used to achieve repetitive tasks this is where the loops comes handy Suppose if you want to do some task repeatedly that is 1000 times or 10,000 times, you cannot write the code those many times, right? So these kind of repeated tasks can be achieved using loops. For example, if you want to print the first 1000 numbers or first 1000 even numbers or to access the elements from a large list or set, we can achieve such tasks using loops with minimal coding. Let's start with the for loop. We will take one example of a list and we will try to access all the elements using for loop and we will print the elements. So let's take one list called fruits and we will initialize that with some fruit names called apple, banana and orange. Now let's try to iterate the list using for loop for fruit in fruits print fruit oops sorry there is a syntax error with colon be careful with that corrected now here it is we are able to access and print all the elements from the list using for loop let's take one more example and we'll try to print a numbers from 0 to 9 using range function so for the range function we have to give argument as 10 so it will print from 0 to 9 in range 10 print i then control enter here you can see the output it's printed from 0 to 9 so with just two lines of code using loop we are able to print 10 numbers this is how the loops are handy for repeated tasks this is all about the for loops now let's explore the second one that is while loops using while loop let's try to print the first five numbers starting from 0 to 4 so let's take a variable count equal to 0 while count is less than 5 remember the syntax then print the count right then we have to increase the counter for each iteration this is very important step otherwise while will not stop and it will run indefinitely so on execute there it is it is printing from 0 to 4 so this is how the while loop works and handy like for loop suppose if we want to control these iterations that means we need to skip based on some conditions we can achieve that also using the break statement here i have given the code snippet you can see here again i am using the range function for 10 iterations but if you see when i is reaching 5 i am just breaking the loop this is how we can stop or terminate the loops in the middle using break statement So if I execute this, there you go, you can see the output, it's only printed 0 to 4, that means after 5 iterations when i equal to 5, it got break or control came out of the loop, right? So like break, we have one more concept called continue. Now let's check how this continue is helpful with the loops. Like from our previous example, printing of numbers, if we want print only the odd numbers from it, we can use continue to skip the even numbers. That means when a number is divided by 2, that is even number, right? So for that respective iteration, we can use continue and we can skip that iteration. So here in this example, inside loop, I am just checking if i divided by 2 equal to 0, then continue, else print the number. So on execution, there it is. If you observe in range 10, it printed only the odd numbers, right? 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. So this is how the continue and break statements were so handy inside the loops. And the next thing is, we can also use nested loops that is loop inside another loop. Here I have already written some code. If you see the outer loop is for i in range 3 and the inside loop is for j in range 3. So the total iterations that means print statement will execute 9 times 3 into 3 times, right? So on control enter, if we execute this, I am printing both i and j, there we go. See for every i value, j printed 3 times, right? i is repeated 3 times. When i is 0, j printed 0, 1, 2. When i is 1, j printed again 0, 1, 2 and so on. 
These nested loops are very handy when you go through the two dimensional data. We will demo these examples in our upcoming machine learning tutorials. Don't worry. As of now, this is all about the loops. So as of now, we have covered all the essential topics in Python. There is only one final topic left that is functions in Python. Let's go through this final topic. Then we will be in a good position to proceed with machine learning further. So the functions are nothing but the reusable modules. Write code once and use any number of times. If you see in our previous examples, we have used so many functions like range function, print function. Also to check the data types, we used the type function, right? So those are all the inbuilt functions provided by the Python. Similarly, we can also define our own functions to achieve specific tasks and we can invoke those functions using functions calls whenever and wherever we want. Here I have written the small notes on functions and we will go through the syntax of the function, the function name and arguments. Then we'll see usage and various features of the functions. So let's dive into the final coding. So to define the function in Python, we use def keyword def keyword followed by the function name and parenthesis. So let's start with the function implementation def greet function and inside function I am printing hello bit b. So if you observe, I'm not passing any arguments or parameters here to the function. So now we need to invoke this function, right? So just greet and open close parentheses to call the function on control enter the function got invoked and it's printed right there you can see hello bit b now let's try to modify the above function by passing some argument to it so i'm just passing a parameter called name and print hello plus name so let's call the function use greet i will pass a parameter here bit b from ml python so on execution here you see the output hello bit b from ml python this is how you can dynamically send the parameters and you can use them inside the function and the next is there is one more concept called default parameters to function which means in case of absence of a parameter the function will use the default parameter to demo it i am just writing a one more function here df grid default name equal to world which is a default parameter and I am printing that argument print name then let's call that uh, function greet default and greet default some name so one function call I am just passing the parameter another I am just ignoring here we go the output is python and world so the second method call where we have not passed a parameter there it's printed the default parameter this is how the default parameter works and the very final topic with the function is the return statements in function yes in most of the times we need to return something from the function that is a calculated value or a list or a string anything so here i have written a function which will calculate a factorial of a number and it will return the value that is the resultant factorial so here i am passing a argumenter 5 to the factorial function inside function using while loop i am calculating the factorial of the number the result is stored in a variable called fact and at the end of the function we are returning that fact right so on invoking of this method from the print function print factorial of 5 it is printing the factorial 120 right this is all about how we can define the functions and we can use them and I want to congratulate you here, you have completed the course Essential Python for Machine Learning. I hope this course is very helpful for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, please like and share the channel with your friends. See you in the next. Thank you.